TV viewers, welcome back to Healthy Life the Vegan Way. I'm your host, Kalindi. Healthy Life the Vegan Way is a series in collaboration with World Vegan Vision, a not for profit organization whose mission is to spread the love of veganism um, for your health, for the health of the environment, and for animal welfare. And today I am back again with Dr. Shah, the president of World Vegan Vision. Uh, to discuss and continue our uh, talk on veganism and spirituality. Um, Dr. Shah is a physician in internal medicine. Uh, he has been practicing for 35 years. Uh, he has been vegan for over 20 years. And um, through his change, his uh, transformation, uh, he has changed so many around him. He has touched so many lives, um, not only changing their diet uh, or reversing, preventing, managing their disease, but also in a very different way, um, he has touched people his, through his passion in meditation and spirituality. Um, he, a practitioner of medicine and a, practicing, uh, and a practitioner of meditation and spirituality, Dr. Shah has been a mentor and guide to a lot of people around him. Uh, he runs a website, pra uh, Practical Spirituality, Dr. Shah. Yes. Uh, practical spirituality, through which he guides a lot of people around. Um, so today's topic is Dr. Shah's passion, which we are con continuing on veganism and spirituality. And let's talk more about it. Last time we discussed how the veganism and spirituality are interconnected. Um, today, I'm going to start with asking Dr. Shah his own experience. Um, so, Dr. Shah, how, you know, how veganism led to spirituality for you or was spirituality the beginning and veganism? So if you can please um, talk about your own experience. I can say that uh, the, my life has been uh, very blessed and uh, I had like most beautiful things that happened and two most beautiful things that happened in my life was my passion for spirituality and my passion for veganism. And they were still remote for me. Uh, don't say that, you know, that just, just fell from the sky. Little by little, your interest develops and you keep going deeper into it. It has its own frustrations. It has its own benefits. But at the end of the day, what comes out of it was a beautiful thing. And I'll explain. You know, you know in India, we have this Triveni Sangam, yes. where Ganga, Jamuna, 
they get together and there is a third river inside that is does not come to the surface but it is there saraswati so ganga jamuna and saraswati saraswati by by default is the goddess of knowledge so for me it was a literally triveni sangam sangam happening in my own life and i'll explain for last 20 some years i had been uh, i had been exposed to surya spirituality on my own and just it had to happen and i got exposed to gita and then i read uh, everything written by uh, chinmayanand to all the upanishad kan upanishad kat upanishad vivekchadamani atma buddha vasistha yoga you just name it and you i read it and reading is reading but actually experience is another thing so once i read i got primed to to be able to experience the samadhi state which they all talked about it that samadhi state is something that is beyond your mind it's totally beyond your imagination and i kept reading about it but it wasn't happening uh the whole uh, idea of uh, the samadhi state is to be able to go beyond your body and beyond your mind into a state where there are no thoughts and very easy to speak but very difficult to do uh, and, and the mind just doesn't give up because mind like we said in the last session is filled with so many desires so many beliefs so many convictions so many likes so many dislikes and all these things is keep us so occupied the mind is like a like a spoiled brat like a spoiled dog you know it just keeps on making you run all the time and you never have a chance to go beyond the mind it requires continuous attention so it was not happening but meanwhile of course i came across the lot of benefits of veganism i read the book diet for new america by john robbins and i read a lot, lot of his first hand experience with how cruel uh, ways the animal industries are suppressing these animals and suffering i literally cried so veganism started becoming a mainstream in my life also but you know we live at the body level we live at the mind level and then we have soul like we talked about so body level we all know that yes you know if you go on a whole food plant based diet you will lose weight you will become slim your diseases will get better and all those kind of things understandable most of the people live at the body level some people go beyond and at the mind level mind level you have factual informations that okay it can cause cancer it can lead to heart disease it hasn't happened yet obese you are already there right diabetes you already have that but like cancer supposing it can happen in the future so you extrapolate and you try to get rid of it the veganism uh, go towards the vegan is non vegan diet and all that so i was trying to go vegan but to tell you the truth the mind wants to do the right thing but also mind wants to do the wrong thing you go to a party there are friends everybody eating the the dairy products and and all those things and you you say well you want it but you're not going to have it because you know all these bad things about it so it's always a split and mind likes this duality it continuously going back and forth back and forth back and forth in that you never find any peace there is so much restlessness at the mind level so it does not let you go beyond itself so one day i was meditating and i kept meditating and meditating and i just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper until i started becoming almost so light that ultimately i connected uh, to the softness of the consciousness and in the softness of the consciousness suddenly it just came out because i made the realization that this this beautifully soft atma the soul is the freest substance because it is infinite spirit has no shape has no shape no size no color so it's not limited it's unlimited so when i experience it and suddenly an inner voice came in that the soul that you are carrying is no different than the soul of the cows that means at the physical level we all are different at the mind level very different but at the soul level you cannot define because it's indefinable at the soul level we are all the same so that's when i realized that at that time the what that bothered me was the the compulsory pregnancies that the cows had to go through that somehow bothered me that artificial insemination to me it seemed like a rape because there was no consent taken from the cow there was not her spontaneous wish to get pregnant nothing so i felt that that was just not acceptable uh, compared to the freedom that i was experience, experiencing of the soul i said at that time just the inner voice came in just give it up 
So then the most beautiful thing happened. After that point onward, once your soul tells you something, you just do it. And whatever soul says, the mind has to listen. And whatever mind says, body has to listen. So the miracle happened to me in the sense that everything became so smooth. All of a sudden, all the frictions, all the restlessness, all the sufferings disappeared. Now, whenever I would go to a party, what will happen is people will eat. I will not eat. But this time, instead of feeling kind of attracted to those foods, suddenly I would be continuously connect, remaining connected with the souls of those cows. That if I don't consume this, there is some cow which is going to benefit. And there was a sense of joy, the sense of like connectedness, love for all. All these things came out. So for me, the spirituality was Ganga and veganism was Jamuna. But the inner experience of Samadhi state was the Saraswati. So it was such a beautiful experience that I had. Not everyone may go through that, but if people who are already meditating, they will benefit a lot from the vegan diet, whole food, plant-based diet. Because just imagine if somebody is trying to become, get more and more pure, go towards more and more truth, more and more clarity. How can you knowingly eat non-vegan food knowing that some animal has given up his life for, right. your, for your stomach? It's just not possible. Uh, it doesn't mean you cannot. It will be hard. Uh, like you can say that Jesus probably ate meat or Ram, uh, Ram Krishna Brahms. He probably ate meat, uh, fish being the Bengali and all that. It's just understandable. But their inner urge the consciousness to express was so powerful that despite all this thing, they could go. But for people like you and me, uh, we are not that achieved. It will be very difficult. It's like almost carrying a heavy stone on your back and trying to climb a mountain. How would you want to do it without the stone or with the stone? So whole food plant-based diet will bring that purity in you right. and make your mind so soft and so simple that for you to jump to the higher level will become very possible. So. so. What a wonderful journey, uh, Dr. Shah. Yeah, it was very nice. You <laughs> summed up, I mean, so beautifully. Thank you, thank you. You know, and it is not just about now, you know, when you're, you mentioned it, you described it, the way you described it is just not about your gut, not about your stomach. Way beyond that. It is way beyond it. It's yes. just reaching a different level. Correct. And uh, you said that level, the highest level was uh, samadhi. Correct, right? correct, correct. So what would it be for, you know, a non-meditator or, you know, someone who has not gotten into it? Like, how would you, what, how would their journey lead them to that? How vegan, you know, being vegan, sort of cleansing, I would be, I would say closer to cleansing would lead to samadhi. Uh, like I said, the samadhi state is a state of total bliss. It's total peace, total rest. It's like after you take a big journey up on the mountain and when you reach to a temple and the temple, the, the, they offer you the prasadam and prasadam, it, it, it comes, is a meditation, is a journey. At the end, when you reach to the samadhi state, the prasadam is being given, offered to you for all the sufferings that you went through, all the mental agony, mental uh, restlessness you went through and you, despite that, you went on and on and on. You did not quit in the middle of the path. And that's when you, the Samadhi experience happens. And when that happens, you just immediately filled with tremendous joy, love for all, compassion for all, because all your conditions, whether, whether uh, am I different than you or you are different than him and this and that, all these differences which are stored at the mind level, they disappear. And it becomes an all compassing state where you connect with everything in the world. So it's a beautiful state to experience, uh, but at the same time, it takes time and effort. For me, vegan diet really helped a lot achieving that goal. But I agree, not everyone may be into the, the spirituality, may not necessarily care about the samadhi state and things like that. But I have patients, I, they come and tell me, Doc, this was the best advice you ever gave me. I mean, these are not spiritual people. They cannot even talk about meditations or even explain how... But sometimes they come with unexplainable joy. They said, Doc, I don't know why. Now I'm going and telling people on the street that you should go vegan. You should go vegan. And all those kind of things, it's just coming out of me. And sometimes you wonder, 
What is happening to them? What is happening to them? I can tell because I have taken that journey. The moment you defy your mind, you do anything. I'm not even talking about whole food plant-based diet. Anything where mind says yes and you say no, it's a, every time you say no for the yes of the mind, there is a release happening. You started becoming free from the mind itself, one step at a time. I, I had run six marathons, 5.30 in the morning. I'm supposed to run outside, zero degrees. And my mind says, let's go back get the comforter and go to sleep like everybody else is doing. I said, no, because it's 5.30, I'm going to go no matter what. So after a while, the mind stops listening to you. And then you feel the freedom. When I ran Chicago Marathon at mile 10, it, they put a Nike had an ad. They said, goodbye, endorphins, welcome inner strength. So the strength, <laughs> the strength belongs to the soul. That spiritual strength is an amazing strength. So for all these things to happen, these people cannot explain because they have not methodically experienced this because I took the spiritual path. But there are a lot of people come with so much joy on their face. And that's why you see so many people passionate about veganism. This is the reason. This is that unexplainable joy that is coming out of them. So that's so beautiful about You, you know, it's so good so nice that you mentioned that why people like to say they're vegan, you know, uh, there are always jokes made on vegans saying, oh, why do you have to come and say you're vegan? But that is, a, like you're saying, I, I do experience that too. Right. Absolutely. You know, coming out and seeing so much food there and saying, hey, no, you know what? Thank you. I'm vegan. Yes. <laughs> people take it, honestly, they take it as an offense saying, why do you have to say that you're vegan? But okay. yes, there is, you know, we, we don't, it's not that you are like, you know, sort of showing off if you say it. yes 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 unquote, it is it is a joy it is actually yes. hey, you know yeah you enjoy but i'm fine and yes. i'm enjoying where i am right and you put it so beautifully yes thanks yeah. so the thing is that even and now the tables are turning as the more and more people yes. are vegan i mean now it's not even a, an unheard of a vegan everybody has heard of vegan a lot of times uh, people leave and uh, they still eat the non-vegan food in front of me and all those things but whenever we meet personally and they say, Dr. Shah, uh, um, I know I cannot do what, but I do appreciate that it's really very difficult for me, but you have done it. Uh, and I realized that it's not difficult for me. I cannot explain everything because it, the, the message came from within at the soul level. I just could not eat. So it's very difficult. But so this is the going beyond the mind is very difficult. Bottom line is, and these people cannot do it. So even though they, make fun of it or whatever in presence of others and all that. But deep inside, everybody knows that you are doing the right thing. And that's why, like, we had the question about, like, all these diets, right? Yes. So I was going to ask you, that what, yes. what is, why is it different? You know, there's... Right. So if you really look at all these diets, the Mediterranean diet and DASH diet and, and all this keto thing. diet and all these things, there is not one diet which says, do not eat animal foods. And Despite that, its vegan diet is a complete diet, especially the whole food plant-based diet. The sattvic vegan diet is, is the most complete diet, which can provide everything. But one more thing it provides, which is an additional stuff, is the compassion. compassion right? The compassion you can practice at every dinner table. And we teach our children to be compassionate. We tell them to be kind. But when the kids grow up and they realize that we are not necessarily just kind to the cows or, or the chickens. We actually kill them. Forget about kindness. That's even a misnomer. That, that does not even describe what we do. We kill them. So children deep inside, they know that we are hypocritical. We are talking about being nice and kind to dogs and cats, but not to these animals. So, so, and children are pure. So if you really want the purity compassion spread all over the world, we have to do it ourselves first. Children will follow us. And with compassion, the same compassion you have towards the animal, it will become your nature, one plate at a time. And when it becomes your nature, you will be compassionate towards your neighbors, your community members, your country countrymen, and the people all around the world. Someday, hopefully, there will be a world peace just all starting from your plate. 
your, your plate, right? From, from your table. dinner table, from your plate. And can bring the world peace for you. And you know, even people who practice whole food plant-based diet, even if they're not spiritual, unknowingly there is spirituality associated with it. Absolutely. Right? Yes, absolutely. Right. And that is the beauty of it. You know, like, like you go to an unknown country, right? And they have different cuisines, different ways of cooking and all this thing. And suddenly you meet a whole food plant-based diet guy. <laughs> He's eating the same thing you're eating because you're eating pretty much raw food all day long and minimal cooking. And otherwise it's all natural, pure foods and all that. And you, all, of, all of a sudden you have something in common compared to all the cooked food uh, that you have all kinds of recipes and all those kind of things. So it gives you something to bond to. So that's what I'm saying. The whole food plant-based diet can bind the whole world at some point. It can bind you with your inner self and with the whole world. Absolutely. Right? That's the only way because that's the connectivity. See, the nature of God is love. Yeah. The love that springs from within, compassion that springs from within for the cows is unconditional because even though I like shrikhand or, or kalab jambu or, or pizza or pasta, whatever, Despite those conditions, I'm ready to let go if I can benefit a cow. So that's breaking your boundaries of your mind and going beyond that. And those are the boundaries which are dividing uh, this religion, that religion, like this, those don't like this, tall and short and money and all those things, height and colors and all those things have divided this world with catastrophic results. But if we have a real, a simple way to connect with everyone, I think it's a whole food plant-based diet. So, so to bring it to love is the nature of God. So the path to him will also be through love. Very well said, Dr. Shah. I mean, incredible, like how you connected our diet to our own self, to spirituality and greater, you know, and to the greater universe around us, right? Right. And one a single thing, whole food plant-based diet, a vegan diet, that's the way to go. Yes. Friends. Yes, that's the way to go. Hopefully, our discussion on spirituality opens up more eyes, opens up your eyes wider to the world around you. And as Dr. Shah said, uh, three things. Shravan, right, Dr. Shah? Yes, Shravan, Manan, and Acharan. Acharan is the way towards a healthy you and a more connected self. Thank you, friends. And we will meet you next time on Healthy Life, the Vegan Way. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Thank you, Karindi.